So we wrote down the fundamental identity that is, it takes the place of the Pythagorean identity that we had before. So this is the relationship. And now we get into actual definitions. We'll start with cosine hyperbolic of x is e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by 2. And cinch or sine h of x is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. So those are good to memorize or write on your sheet sheet right here. Actually, most of what we need from this section will be at the very, very end. There'll be five antiderivatives we get. That's really all you'll need to put onto your cheat sheet. So we'll start developing some identities. So first thing, simplify to sine h x cos h x. So go ahead, use these definitions, multiply them together, and see what you can simplify it to. At some point, you're going to have to FOIL, although you're really multiplying conjugates. I'll give you a minute to simplify this down. Algebra simplification questions. So what we got looks pretty familiar. It's almost hyperbolic sine. How is it different from being sine h of x? It's not quite sine h of x. It's sine h of what? So not quite x, but wherever I see x, 2x. So it's the sine h of 2x. And that's our first identity right there. This is actually a double angle formula right here, if you want to give it a proper trig name. We're not going to label all these identities like we did in trig class. And let's go ahead and define the rest of the trig functions. What would be a reasonable way to define tangent hyperbolic of x? Yep, you gotta keep it hyperbolic, but it's hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. So that's tangent. So hyperbolic sine cinch h over cos h 
and we can write the definitions of the two. So cinch H has the minus, this is e to the x minus e to the minus x. Cos H is e to the x plus e to the minus x. Yep, those twos are both gonna cancel out. Or I should say the halves will both cancel out. So I won't bother writing them in here. So there's tangent. And the other three are exactly what you think. They're just the reciprocals of the first three. So we got the basics, tan, secant, or tan, cosine and sine, and the other three are just reciprocals. So we can write those out. Let's go cotangent. First, we're already right here. So cough x is cosh over cinch. There's no C in cinch. And we did cosine first, so we'll do sec hyperbolic. Uh, you can't even pronounce that. Sesh. So that is one over cos hyperbolic, which is the reciprocal of the hyperbolic cosine definition. So it's two over e to the x plus e to the minus x. And, ah, oh, definitely can't pronounce four consonants in a row. Uh, and this is two over e to the x minus e to the minus x. Probably not worth putting boxes around all this, but I'm going to anyways. These are our other definitions. And some identities. Let's work with cos h of 2x. So we just did an identity for sin h of 2x. Let's look at cos h of 2x and just use that definition for cos h. So we have e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x. So we are actually looking at conjugates, even though it doesn't look like it. So e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x is e to the x squared minus, no, plus e to the minus x squared. There we go. Yes. Uh-oh. That's not conjugates. Those are not going to be conjugates. So this algebra, I'm not sure the exact path to go. Let's start at the other end of this identity and work backwards. So this is what you do when you're in trig and you're stuck on identity and you can't go forward. You start at the other end and go backwards. So let's forget that. We'll go with cos h squared x. Now, just like the bad notation we used with exponents in trig functions, we continue to use that bad exponential notation with hyperbolic trig functions. So, cos h squared of x means take the cosine of x, the hyperbolic cosine, and then square it afterwards. And the same thing with hyperbolic sine. This is take hyperbolic sine and then square afterwards. So now I'm going to write down what cosine of x is, e to the x 
plus e to the minus x e to the x minus e to the minus x squared and we square both of these terms we get e to the 2x plus 2e to the minus no plus 2 maybe I should be a little more careful we'll go through this a little more slowly So we have e to the x squared, and we have e to the x, e to the minus x, plus e to the minus x, e to the x, plus e to the minus x squared, all over 2 squared. So that's the first term foiled out, and we'll foil out the second term, plus, and we have a lot less room. It's going to look really similar. The only difference is the two, the inside-outside terms, have a minus on them. That's the only difference. So we get e to the x squared minus e x e minus x minus e x e minus x plus e minus x squared over 2 squared. So everything is over 4. We get common denominator. 2 squared is 4. Now, what cancels out? Those middle terms are the positives of the other middle terms. So all the middle terms are going to knock each other out. And we're actually going to get 2 of the first terms, because they add together, 2e to the x squared plus 2e to the minus x squared. So let's factor a 2, cancel with the denominator a little bit. So we have e to the x squared plus e minus x squared over 2. So it's e to the 2x plus e minus 2x over 2. And what hyperbolic trig function is this? Cosh. So it is cosh of what? It's not just cosh x. Cosh 2x. And it's hopefully not what we started with. Nope, we started with cosh squared plus cinch squared. There's our next identity. And I just realized we should write this in the, no, we'll write it in this order and we'll see why. So cosh squared x, this is the, how to take a square power down to a, a first power, and you get something similar. Hyperbolic sine cosh 2x minus 1 over 2. Yeah, everything should be hyperbolic in this okay. in this chapter. Yeah, if any trig functions are written without an H, that was a mistake in this section. So our next identity, tan hyperbolic squared x equals 1 minus seek hyperbolic squared x. And cotangent hyperbolic squared x is 1 plus 
cosecant hyperbolic squared x. Let's pick one of these to prove. I think it take too much time. We proved the one on the top already. So which one of these should we prove? Let's go with, let's prove this one right here. So remember how to prove identities. You start on one side and then do algebra and hopefully arrive on the other side. So I don't know that they're equal yet, so I'll replace, I'll put a question mark over my equal sign. It should be equal. So start on the complicated side. That's generally the trig way to do it. So we would normally start on the right side, except I know one thing I can do to replace the left side. No the right side. So let's replace cos cosh 2x with what's at the top of the screen right there. So I'm going to replace cosh 2x with cosh squared plus sin squared. So put the right side or the left side away. We're going to only work on the right side. And we got cosh squared x plus cinch squared x plus 1 over 2. So this looks sort of promising, except a lot of this stuff's going to have to disappear. So I'll circle the bad stuff. I don't want that stuff there. Cinch squared x plus 1. So I need some identities to get rid of that. Now, I would probably not rely on my brain to think of the identity, so I'm just going to scroll up because I don't want to get confused with the regular trig identities. So I'm going to scroll up and see, do we see anywhere cinch squared and a 1 up here? Oh, here we go. How can I turn our original, our very first identity into cinch squared plus 1? By adding cinch squared u. Yep, just add the cinch squared to the uh, both sides. So we get oops, cosh squared. I'll switch back to x's equals 1 plus cinch squared x. So we're going to use this, replace 1 plus cinch, cinch squared with cosh squared. Or cinch squared plus 1 with cosh squared. Oh, well that's really convenient. Kosh plus Kosh is two Kosh, cancel the two. So we just get hyperbolic cosine squared of X. Uh oh. Oh yeah, it's good, okay. I was like, ah, oh, it's exactly what we started with. But no, we started on the right side. So that's exactly where we wanted to end up. Okay. You can prove the other ones in similar ways. Uh, I have a feeling the last two you will be dividing by. So tangent is uh, sine over cosine, or hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. So you could take, let's see, one of these, probably the first one that we just looked at right here, and just divide both sides by either hyperbolic cosine squared or hyperbolic sine squared get the other one. Oh, there's a house going right by the window. <laughs> there's a house going by the window. Yeah, I have the same patio lights. <laughs> it's supposed to be the small house day. That looks like a medium-sized house, though. It's Earth Day, apparently. Or maybe a medium-small house. It's a house pulling. No, tiny house is how it was advertised. That's a small house. Squirrel. Or maybe it's a tiny house for big people. I don't want to live in one. Anyway. 
cut this too. So I think we're done doing algebra slash hyperbolic trig and we're ready to go into calculus now. I think those are the, all the identities we needed. So we'll start out taking derivatives. When in doubt, take derivatives. So we'll start out with uh, hyperbolic cosine first. How in the world do we figure out the derivative of hyperbolic cosine? There's really only one thing we know about hyperbolic cosine. And I don't mean how it relates to the other five trig functions, but just hyperbolic cosine itself. What is the one thing that we know about hyperbolic cosine? Uh, equals e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Uh, that's exactly right. We know the definition. So go ahead and take this derivative. This should not be a hard derivative to take. Be a little careful with your chain rule. There is a slight chain rule happening with that second term because it's not e to the x, it's e to the minus x. So just be a little careful with your chain rule. So the derivative changes, basically changes the sign of the second term to negative, because it's e to the minus x times negative 1. So derivative of cos or cosh is cinch. That's one of the first indications of why they went tri with the trigonometric names for these. Before this, it was sort of seemed kind of arbitrary. So derivative of cosine is sine. Well, hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine. If these weren't hyperbolic, you would have gotten negative. Derivative of regular cosine is negative sine. So what you're going to find is your negatives are not where you would normally expect them. Sometimes there's a negative where you don't expect it on a derivative, sometimes not. No, there'll be other times where, uh, where it will be negative for certain functions. Uh, for example, I can just look at it and see the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Um, so yeah, negatives pop up in places in as often as I do in regular trig functions, just not in the place that you would expect them. So we're going to do derivative of cinch, and we're going to do it in the same way. We're just going to take the definition of cinch, which is e to the x minus e to the minus x. Now this derivative should be even easier after what you just did. So derivative of cinch is cosh. We'll go tangent or tanch. So there is at least two ways to do the derivative of tangent. One way is, I kind of define it in two equivalent ways. One way is use the e to the x. So that would be one way to do it. Another way to do it is write it as cinch over cosh. Let's go that second route right there. So I could go the first way, but let's do the second way instead. All right, what rule do I have to use? Quotient rule. rule. And plus I have to remember what my hyperbolic trig derivatives are. So derivative of cinch is cosh times cinch 
minus derivative of cosh, which is cinch. Uh oh. Should be cosh cosh. Minus derivative of cosh is cinch times cinch divided by cosh squared. So any quotient rule questions off of that. We got cosh squared minus cinch. So here's a really bad move to make. Cancel. Because we're subtracting, not multiplying on the top, you're not allowed to do that. So don't do it. What is cosh minus cinch? One. one. So that's our Pythagorean identity in air quotes. So we got one, oops, don't need red anymore, one over cosh squared 